When it comes to United playing at Anfield, it's always the first game you look for when the fixtures are released at the start of the season. And it's always the one you worry about. It's hard to go there. United haven't got the best of recent records there. Certainly goal scoring. I only scored one goal there in the last four games, I think, in the Premier League. But we go there tomorrow night and we play Liverpool, who, and it's sickens me to say, are quite literally chasing a quadruple. Going toe-to-toe with City while we're scrapping away for a fourth place. Uh, sign of the times and what's happened at their club over the last five, six years and what's happened to our club. But Tuesday night, can we do anything to try and put a dent in their hopes for that quadruple? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to run through the starting 11, the team news, the conversation going into the game against Liverpool at Anfield. Oh. The last game, we all know what happened to Old Trafford. I'm not going to say the score. You know what happened. Let's speak about the game. Before I do quickly start, make sure you go down there, um, if you would, go down there and hit that subscribe button uh, and hit the notification bell as well. You get a ding every time I go live with a video such as this wonderful video that you definitely don't want to watch. Let's talk about it. Team news going into the Liverpool game. Jordan Henderson, Joel Massive, Jogo Jota could all return for Liverpool. Great. The squad has such depth that they can drop that. All those against City at Wembley and win. Lovely. Manchester United hope to welcome, will hope to welcome back Rafael Varane. Now, that is significant. We'll talk about that, and we all know why. Fred and McTominay, both still unlikely to start. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Because if you take a look at this team that started against Liverpool, you'll remember that I didn't do one of these videos for the game against Norwich. I just felt that there were more important conversations to be having at that moment in time than that game, because I'll be honest, I checked out for the season. I didn't expect Brighton to beat Spurs. I didn't expect Arsenal to lose Southampton. Maybe I was wrong to jump to that conclusion there because we're, we're banging. Again, we're in, we're in a top four race now. But now we go to Anfield and then we go away to the Emirates and then we play Chelsea all in the space of nine days. Could all be very different in nine days. That team against Norwich will start graving bonkers and we know that. But it was a product of the current circumstances. No Tomine, no Fred, no Varane. So we played a midfield three of Popper at the bottom of a three with Bruno and Lingard? It was all sorts of weird. Lo and behold, it played weird. United were 2 up though, cruising, fine. Nah, don't worry about it, this is United. <laughs> yeah, we can always make it difficult. In terms of what we expect to see against Liverpool, right? We need to see a better defence. Ralph Randnick spoke about it. Oh, that was supposed to be over there. Ralph Randnick spoke about it after the game. And I like that he was throwing... Shade, really. He's saying, look, the reason the club contacted me was to sort this defence out. We did that, but look up now. It's not top four standard. It absolutely isn't top four standard, because if you look at what that defence did there, Maguire getting pulled out of position. Tellez, was it Tellez wasn't covering his man? It was Tellez wasn't covering his man at the back post. Defensively, everybody was all out of shape for the goals against Norwich. Certainly the first one. One change I absolutely expect to happen is for Wamba Saka to come in for Diogo Delo. Whether or not you think that's the right move or not is irrelevant. Wamba Saka is significantly better in a one-on-one -on -one situation than Diogo Delo. Therefore, Wamba Saka will 100% start this game and he's going to have a grim game. Be up against Mane, who's back in form. Luis Diaz, who looks lightning. Unfortunately, oh, is that another great signing that Liverpool managed to make? Imagine, amazing what happens when you actually know what you're doing with your recruitment. Uh... Liverpool just look good at the moment. Everywhere, there's not really too much of a weakness in their team. And I'm struggling to find strength in this United team. Wan-Bissaka is definitely coming in there. If we're looking at big weaknesses, we know that all of us want to see this. In an ideal world, we all want to see that against Liverpool. And sorry, I'm going to predict it. Ragnik, man. Message to you. Don't be stubborn with Maguire like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was with McTominay, with Fred. I always said that that was a sort of a hill that he might die on, but it was. You're an interim manager. You don't have to be polite to these players. Maguire's playing shit at the moment. You need to do him a favour. Clearly, playing more is not helping him. Clearly, having the armband isn't helping him. Take him out from this game at Anfield. It's going to be ridiculously intense. It always is intense playing at Anfield. For the first 20 minutes, mantra, don't score. Don't Sorry, don't score. That's terrible mantra. Don't concede. And it's going to be even more intense with the way that Liverpool are playing, the way that Manchester United are playing at the moment. I think that's going to be the back five there. De Gea, no doubt. De Gea, please have one of those games. Just, I'm kind of begging you at this point. Please, 
save us. Lindelof and Varane, it's still not an incredible partnership. Varane, I mean, he's turned into more like Sergio Ramos at PSG than Pete Varane at Real Madrid, isn't he? He's just injured, constantly injured. Niggles, hopefully he's back and fit to play. If he's not, it's going to be Maguire there. I don't want to talk about the back five anymore. It just, it scares me. It, this whole game just terrifies me. The last was an absolute, utter humiliation for United and United fans at Old Trafford. And I wish I could go into this game with any sort of massive optimism, but I just don't know. And it's, but look, look at that midfield that we started against Norwich. I hate this club. I hate the fact that we haven't just signed any midfielders. Just, I don't get how we've allowed, been allowed to spend so much money with, whilst constantly overlooking the big problem in this team. And this is the biggest example of it. Popper playing as a DM. He's not a DM. Lingard playing in midfield. I mean, it's Lingard in midfield. What have you got to say about that? I don't know what change is going to be made, though. This is, this, is the, this is the crucial point here. How does he fix this midfield without Matomane and Fred? Now, the obvious thing to do is that, right? We're looking at probably the best setup for this midfield. We're looking at the players that we've got. It's kind of obvious that it's something like that. Now, Pogba, we've got to have a, quite, we've got to have a sort of a conversation about, really. What sort of attitude is Pogba going to have going into this game after being told to fuck off by United fans? when he got substituted and he's given it the old cup tears, which he was perfectly entitled to do after literally being told to fuck off. So I don't know how any United fan can be offended by that. But Pogba, in a game where midfield, one and lost in midfield, it won't just be, it would be lost everywhere. But we know how Liverpool play. They're going to play with such intensity that this United team is unlikely to be able to cope. So the idea that two of our midfield are Matic and Pogba, who just, they play in a slower pace of life. They won't be able to cope with that. And Bruno will go around like a yapping terrier trying to make up for all of that and probably exacerbate the problems. Lingard, I understood why Lingard started against Norwich-ish. I probably understand it more if he started here. I genuinely, for the life of me, I don't know what midfield three to put there. On paper, the logic tells me Matic there with Popper there and Bruno there. That's actually a midfield which you might have some semblance of control with. But it's probably unlike if that was the case, then why wouldn't if they were if they were all fit enough to do that against Norwich, then why didn't they start? Why didn't Ragnick start that against Norwich? If he's not going to start that against Norwich, is he really going to start it away at Liverpool? Sod knows. I think he might just try the same thing again. You know, I think genuinely you might see the the same midfield because I can understand Lingard's enthusiasm, his effort, his energy. But uh, the whole midfield stinks. Absolutely stinks. No matter which way you try and... Hopefully Fred's going to be fit and come back in the team. Great. If he comes in, it's kind of an easier conversation. It still won't be a good enough midfield to beat Liverpool, but it'll be an easier conversation. And as for the attackers, you've got to leave Ilanga and Sancho on the wing. You could, in theory, you could do something like this, right? You could pop Sancho down the bench there. I don't know why you're going to drop Sancho, but Ilanga's playing really well now. So you could put him there. You could put Matic there. Uh, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. None of it makes sense. No, actually, you can't do that because you haven't got Fred in my top. Look, it's an absolute clusterfuck at the moment, isn't it? It is a proper mess. Absolute mess. No matter where you look inside this club, inside this team, <sighs> midfield is just... There are there is no midfield. Absolutely. No, I mean, even when the midfield's there, the midfield's not there. I think you're probably looking at that. Sancho and Elanga, you're going to be looking at United sitting with uh, the defensive line it's going to be about there. Midfield line, they're going to try and drop there. Our attack will sit there. We're going to be hitting hard on the counter-attack. That's what we're going to try and do. We're going to be looking for balls over the top to Ilanga, over the top to Sancho, and hopefully Ronaldo can get on the end of a cross and score a tap-in. Or penalties. Either way, this game... I can't remember the last time I went to Anfield with such fear what could happen because we're just in, in, not just in the context of the club but in the context of the seasons Liverpool are on the verge of history and they're playing United at, at Anfield having pumped us 5-0 at Old Trafford they must be rubbing their hands together and this bunch of players have shown me time and time and time and time again that their mentality just isn't there and I reckon we'll start with we'll start with that mentality. But if we go one nil down, we're gonna wilt like spinach, aren't we?
Ronaldo, not even hit Ronaldo can instigate that on his own. He's going to be very isolated, very frustrated against Liverpool. Uh, certainly, I don't think he's going to be scoring a hat-trick at Anfield. Not with the service that he's going to get. For the life of me, people, I don't know what starting eleven to put out here. I'm going to I'm going to go with that midfield three. If he's going to use that midfield three against Norwich, is that a nod to what he could do against Liverpool? It must be. It must be. Otherwise, why else wouldn't you start Matic in that game? Weird. Well, we all know that Matic probably can't last 90 minutes. Compromises, problems, weaknesses everywhere inside that whole team from defence to midfield and in attack as well. I don't know what to expect, but I'm not expecting a happy game. I'm not expecting a game that I'm particularly going to enjoy watching. And if United can come away, even with a draw there, would be a huge result. I don't think we will. It would be a huge result. You can let me know what your prediction is in the comments below. I'm nervous.